One of the biggest sponsors in esports is collapsing as we speak. FTX, a cryptocurrency exchange, had previously sponsored Team Solo Mid to the tune of $210 million. But that seven year agreement has barely made it to year two now that FTX is in the middle of a serious implosion. And the timing isn't exactly great either. I mean, esports hasn't been bulletproof this year, and crypto as a whole is somewhat on the downswing right now. So today, we're taking a look at this FTX situation and asking, what does it have in store for esports, and where might it go from here? Hey guys, before we get into the video, I know it's that time of year when things are getting colder, you might feel cozy, want to curl up on the couch with some entertainment. We're happy to help, so if you enjoy yourself today, why not click the like button, and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, you could do that and ring the notification bell if you're feeling really generous. Okay, back to the video. So the first order of business is just to talk about what has actually happened with FTX. And then later, I'll get to the esports implications. So if you've been following the situation and you don't need the recap, you can skip to the time code below. I'll see you there. Okay, so cryptocurrency. That's the thing we're talking about, right? So what is it? A cryptocurrency is a speculative financial asset that is typically produced through a process called mining, where a computer solves a complex mathematical equation and then slaps the answer to that equation along with the token owner's name on this long digital ledger called the blockchain. Okay, yeah, this is a very simple explanation, but I don't have time to go super in depth on proof of stake as opposed to proof of work and all that. So definitely, if you wanna learn more about that, you could check out a more in-depth video. But honestly, if you wanna understand what happened, that's gonna be enough. So FTX, before its recent troubles, was one of the biggest crypto exchanges on the planet. Essentially, you could use one of these crypto exchanges to turn digital currencies into other currencies, either hard currency like US dollars, or perhaps another digital currency like a cryptocurrency. The exchange in turn usually charges fees for the swaps, much like if you convert currency at a money changer or at a strip mall or something. In a lot of these crypto exchanges, you have to actually deposit your crypto into an account in order to get it changed. So what that means is that there are a lot of people in this specific circumstance whose money may go down with the ship, which is not good. More on that in a bit. FTX, as I said, was a huge player in the space but they were comparatively pretty new. They were founded in 2019 by two MIT graduates, Gary Wang and Sam Bankman Freed, the latter serving as the company's CEO. Weirdly, over the past couple of years, Bankman Freed, who I will now just refer to as SBF, which is his common moniker, had developed this kind of bizarre following and persona. They call him the JP Morgan of crypto, right? Yeah. But FTX was committed to popularizing both crypto and, of course, itself. So it splashed a lot of money on marketing. We're talking professional sports stars like Tom Brady and Stephen Curry. What do you think? Are you in? You know what? I'm in. Let's call everyone. I'm not an expert and I don't need to be. With FTX, I have everything I need to buy, sell, and trade crypto safely. They bought the naming rights to the Miami Heat's venue. They got their logo on Major League Baseball umpire uniforms and BMW's F1 team. They sponsored the Home Run Derby X, chess tournaments, the Golden State Warriors, and the Washington Capitals. They bought a games developer whose CEO was a former Magic the Gathering World Champion and Hearthstone lead designer. And yeah, they sponsored some esports stuff, including tournaments. But they also inked some huge esports deals. The deal to become a naming partner with Team Solo was a record-breaking seven-year, $210 million partnership. And they also became sponsors of the LCS, another seven-year deal that even Riot said was a record for their esports leagues. Now, in esports, the FTX sponsorships were primarily these awareness, kind of passive marketing sponsorships. But in their other materials, it's pretty clear that one of FTX's major aims was to make people scared about missing out on crypto. I'm pregnant. <laughs> it's a boy! <laughs> I'm so happy. Blockfolio by FTX. Okay, pool's going in back here. Did you just say the pool? Infinity pool, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we struck oil. This place is a gold mine. What? It's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. Yeah, I don't think so. And I'm never wrong about this stuff. 
Never. Sorry, I couldn't resist, and uh, eh, maybe I'll get Larry David to help me with my Pick'em's next major. But anyways, a lot of people bought into the hype of both FTX and crypto. But FTX is now seemingly headed for bankruptcy. To cut a very long story short, in September, a Bloomberg report pointed out that FTX was very cozy with another firm, Alameda Research. Perhaps a little too cozy, given that they were also co-founded by SBF. Bloomberg's reporting argued that if this were a regulated financial sector, this relationship would likely have been shut down by regulators. Then an article in early November by Coindesk noted that a massive portion of Alameda's assets took the form of FTX's proprietary cryptocurrency, FTT. How does this work, Mac? The money keeps moving in a circle. But, but we don't have any money. All we have is this. How does this work? I dude? don't know. I thought you... I thought you... What? Suddenly Binance, the biggest crypto exchange, announced that they would be selling all of their FTT. And because FTT wasn't exactly a hot commodity, dumping that much of the token onto the market tanked the price. And as it turns out, fear cuts both ways. The announcement of the sale caused people to panic. People were trying to pull their money out, and with so many people trying to pull money out, it caused what is called a liquidity crisis, which is essentially like FTX has some liquid money, but if everybody wants their stuff back at once, well, they're gonna have to sell some stuff. That takes time and the stuff they're selling, well, that could also have changed in value. So then Binance looked at and decided against a purchase of FTX. And then the United States Securities and Exchange Commission and Commodity Futures Trading Commission opened investigations into what was happening over at FTX. And a bunch of money allegedly went missing too. Now, most of FTX's affiliated companies, as well as Alameda Research, have filed for bankruptcy and it certainly appears as if there will be some people who have trouble getting their money back. Again, this is a very fast overview of the situation. These things are changing almost hourly at this point, and there are a lot of people, perhaps a million people, who could be listed as creditors with FTX. And while this is a blow to cryptocurrencies generally, it probably isn't the end of them, but I am willing to bet that governments are going to be taking a much closer look at cryptocurrency and specifically the regulation part. Okay, but what does this mean for esports specifically? Well, the LCS and TSM just lost a huge sponsor, obviously. In the case of TSM, they've since issued a statement that their books look good even without the FTX deal. We have no way of knowing if that's true, but let's be real. $30 million a year is a lot. I'm sure they had plans for that money. And even if they're fine without it, that probably means, at least in the short term, they've got to cut back on some stuff that they were planning to do. And honestly, even if TSM is completely fine, this damage to crypto generally could still hurt esports. Now, I'm not saying that esports orgs should never take a gambling or crypto sponsorship necessarily, just that we should be honest about what it means for the industry when they do. Because TSM isn't the only team with a crypto sponsorship, and while some of these deals are pretty big, we should be careful about these teams getting addicted to them. Furia was also signed to FTX. Liquid signed a deal with Coinbase, another exchange. Dignitas sold naming rights to Quantum Pay, a digital bank that processes crypto exchanges. Team Vitality launched a support to earn blockchain-based app yesterday. Like, literally yesterday, at the time that this video is published. G2 Esports signed an agreement with Bondly, only to have to sue them when they failed to follow through on their agreement to produce NFTs. Team C Secret was sponsored by Uniswap, a decentralized crypto exchange. Fnatic partnered with Crypto.com in a five-year, $15 million plus deal. And in Rainbow Six Siege, crypto sponsors went a bit wild too. I could literally keep going, but I think you get the point by now. A lot of the biggest players in esports are taking these crypto deals and, well, I think we have to be honest about how risky this is. Because if crypto evaporates, the money does too. That can mean some pretty bad things for esports generally, frankly, and that's just considering the possibility of a general crypto downturn and not, you know, another FTX type situation in an industry that's frankly plagued by poor oversight. I'm not responsible for balancing the books of esports orgs, thank God, but if any of them are relying on this money, 
they are playing with fire and all of esports could get burned. Right now, in the wake of this whole FTX thing, I think even the most dedicated defenders of cryptocurrency have to accept the fact that failure is a possibility in this whole venture, and how could they not? Right now, the value of these things is determined almost entirely by the willingness of new customers to buy in. And maybe that's why so many of these crypto companies seemingly use fear to convince people to get in fast now, before it's too late. Fortune favors the brave. And fans, yeah, maybe even you, haven't been oblivious to that. These cryptocurrency deals haven't exactly been the most popular and fans are quick to voice their opinion about just about anything, as you should, you deserve it. In Fnatic's case, they even got so scared of fan backlash that they stopped calling their NFTs NFTs in their posts. And lastly, let's not forget that it's been a rough year for esports more generally. If the ambition, some might say greed, of certain stakeholders pushes them further into bed with crypto, well, I worry for the future. Because crypto's success is anything but guaranteed. And building your house on that foundation is, like crypto itself right now, a gamble. Because I want esports to keep growing and I don't want its growth to be contingent on something as flighty and unregulated as cryptocurrency. Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring the notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit us up on our Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok.